I'd like to call the order the uh, July 14th Recreation Committee meeting. Uh, Cinnamon, everyone here but Mr. Valentine. Uh, Chris, you want to do that? Sure. Dear Lord, as we gather here tonight, this Recreation Committee meeting, we ask a special blessing on Mr. Garney Gotro, our Recreation uh, Director's brother, as he goes through a difficult time. We ask for your grace for him and, and uh, Mr. Gotro's family. I also ask as we consider the, uh, the children involved in recreation that you keep them safe in their activities this summer and uh, ask for your grace as, as a council to make the best decisions possible. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak, you sign in with the secretary. You get your three minutes. Mr. Compton. Yeah, I, I just wanted to announce real quickly that uh, we're attempting to establish a flag football league for kids ages 5 to 12 in the parish. This is boys and girls. Uh, we're going to start putting some posters up, and I think Lester has a graphic that he can show you guys. We're going to put this poster up pretty much wherever we can, and we're looking for volunteers, for coaches, and we're looking for people to just start contacting us and let us know you're interested so we know that we've got enough kids to participate. So anybody that's interested, you can email me, um, or you can call my office and let me know. I'll put you on the list. So uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Rick. Ricky, what about uh, kids at heart? Like, are you thinking about an ancient athletes flag football uh, division, or? <laughs> uh, you know what? If this league gets established the way I, I hope it will, we will go into the older age brackets okay. because uh, I know that there are kids at heart that that's right. still enjoy playing football. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I think they could still play. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. All right, number four, uh, recreation report. Um, Mr. Grant, you gonna handle this? Oh, okay. Good evening, Councilman, Parish President Martinez, Mr. Grant. Uh, as you've all been told, Garney had a sudden, um, very serious occurrence in his family, and so he won't be here. My recreation director's report is fairly significant since we are undergoing so many changes in recreation right now. We yesterday afternoon had a meeting to start our fall ball program uh, for this year and uh, Gorney met with one of their representatives and I'm sure that they've hashed out something that's been hashed out many many times before so I expect that registration will start fairly soon for the fall ball programs that of course includes softball and baseball there's no t-ball fall ball uh, the Apple program, which is our inclusive league for <coughs> handicapped children, is going to have a special event for the date of July the 25th from 2 until 4 p.m. at AIM, Athletes in Motion, on the airline. They've worked out a deal where the kids are going to get to go there and do a lot of really fun in the sun activities, so we're really looking forward to that. Our senior citizen sock hop is really rolling. It's amazing. I wish some of you guys were old enough to attend, but as you know, there's an age limit and they do card you at the door. Um, the Santa Ma, excuse me, the Ascension Civic Center, um, we are in the process of spending some parish money. I know y'all love to hear that, but we've been given money in order to facilitate upgrades at some of the civic centers that we have, which are in disrepair and are all older buildings except for Geismer, and there are some repairs needed there also. But at the Ascension Civic Center, we are working on the track for the two large barn doors that open up the end of the facility and make it very convenient for things like crawfish boils and all sorts of big events like that, trail rides and such, where the air conditioner is not used. And in fact, they want the open air facility. So those doors have not worked properly in a long time. So we're going to spend a little money and get them working properly. It's also a safety issue that needs to be corrected. Um, we're going to have uh, a major revamp of the sewer system out there because every time we have a, a, a larger event, the sewer backs up. Anytime you have that many people flushing or running water in the sinks, it's just not, it's decrepit. It's not capable of handling those overloads anymore. So we're going to fix it properly the way it should have been fixed. Um, there's also a couple of speakers for the sound system that we have in that building and it's utilized 
at almost every event that we have, we're going to replace those. The ones that we had were just sort of fried, and they were as old as the system itself, so we're replacing those. Uh, at Santa Mar Rec Center, <clears throat> we've replaced the vinyl floor, the tile flooring in the foyer, the hallways, the bar area. I'm sure most of you have been to that center before. And uh, we are also doing some painting and going to uh, repair the ceiling structures that are in there, which is just a, you know, replacing the damaged ones from water. We want to try and improve upon the light system there. Um, we're going to uh, do some remodeling in the men's bathroom. Some tile needs to be replaced. They want to redo the stalls in there. Uh, all these things are in progress, works in progress. We do a little bit at a time and try to keep in mind that we have a lot of centers that we need to spread some of this money around. At Southwood Park, there is dirt work, under, dirt work underway to uh, reorganize that park, to make it more of a family-oriented park with an upgrade on the playground equipment, um, maybe some different venues there instead of uh, a sports facility. We have um, some really nice sports facilities already, and Southwood Park is more of a neighborhood park. The constituency in that particular area has repeatedly asked us to do certain things that are not for organized sports. They're more for family picnics and gatherings like that. So we're working on revamping that park. Um, the DePlessis Park on Highway 621, I cannot tell you the number of times that I get phone calls and people are unaware that that's even a park. They think that's part of the DePlessis school system. So we're in the process of some redos and some additions and some really neat things to go on there. We have in plans to install a 50 by 50 foot gazebo in the center of the walk trail that already exists, right in front of that ditch, that drainage ditch that goes through. DPW is going to address the drainage ditch by lining it with riprap, and <clears throat> I would like to uh, seed that with wildflowers, just scattered in between the riprap. It's low maintenance. They grow on their own. They come back every year. We will eliminate the need for maintenance with spraying and cutting and weed eating and all of that all along that ditch area. Uh, it's a process that's used very widely in other states, and it's quite successful. We are also um, going to be locating a, along the existing walking jogging trail what's called an exercise kiosk. <clears throat> Excuse me. And <clears throat> these are stations that are designed for people who are utilizing the walking jogging trail, they can stop and do standing exercise at these kiosks. They're all designed for handicap access also. You can utilize them if you're in a wheelchair and just rolling out there. Um, they are uh, extremely popular for people who use walking jogging trails. The uh, gazebo, of course, will be designed for family picnics. It'll hold an awful lot of people at 50 by 50. Uh, we intend to have closed off or sectioned off areas. It's going to be octagonal in shape, so we'll have a section where it will be, have railing in it, and we'll put in bench seats on the inside of that. But you can also set up tables underneath there, you know, with tables and chairs for family dinners, any uh, wedding receptions, almost anything. They're, if they can hold it outdoors, it can be held there. We, um, we are also about to install a sign that designates that it is, in fact, a parish park with the name and the lettering and all this. It's a well-designed sign, and we're going to put it up in the park. It just got finished yesterday. I'm guesstimating that within about the next two weeks, we will have a crew out there to install it. So maybe we'll have a few less questions on what is that. At Paula Park, there is in existence an unused concrete slab it, uh, and as you all know, Paula Park is basically a t-ball facility. But with great regularity, I'm getting requests from some local churches, from some of the local constituency about using the park for things other than t-ball. Again, they want church family day gatherings there. They want uh, not anything to do with the, the fields themselves, but they want to do different things, um, birthday parties for children, uh, you know, for four-year-olds, maybe 20 people, they just want to go in the park. Of course, there's no charge to utilize a public park, and they are thrilled 
when I steer them to either Highway 621, tell them that they can in fact use Paula Park. We're not in the T-ball season. So we want to take some of the not used areas in the already existing parks rather than spend money on acquiring new property. <clears throat> that almost has the price of gold attached to it these days. So rather than spend the money there instead of upgrades and improvements to the parks, we would prefer to develop the unused portions of the parks and you'd be amazed if you go and look at how much area is actually not used at some of these sports facilities. The way we intend to do that is this concrete slab that I'm talking about, we're going to erect a 40 by 68 foot pavilion. It's a shelter from the sun, from the rain, if it happens to occur while you're out there. Um, it will allow picnic tables to be set up underneath it, and people can use it, you know, without being charged for it. It's, it's just another space that's not being used that we can use without, number one, increasing our maintenance issues and without um, really having to spend a colossal amount of money. It's just sitting there. It's an asset that's not being used. Also at Paula Park, we're going to extend the walking jogging trail there and connect it to another section which at this time is disconnected. So we will almost double the amount of walking jogging trail in that park. That also is being utilized by people in the neighborhood. People have become more aware of their health issues these days and this is the direction that we're leaning in. Now at these parks where we intend to create a more of an exercise or fitness atmosphere, We've also got to consider that a lot of these parents who want to come walk and jog there, they've got smaller children. So we need to upgrade our recreational facilities in the way of um, playground equipment. We're also going to install in several of the parks climbing rocks. They are extremely popular in throughout the United States as, as a new avenue of um, recreation and entertainment for younger children. And we have uh, ordered about, or we're in the process of, of taking bids on about six of them in varying sizes. And we will distribute them appropriately through the parks that we already have in these unused areas. Um, we have a new program. I'm sure Gorney has probably mentioned it before, but it's on my report tonight because it's really going like gangbusters. And I've even got some visual aids to show you. But this past Saturday, we had seven volunteers certify as archer or archery um, um, instructors. It was a nine-hour course. It wasn't simple, but it was fun. And at the end of the course, we all certified. I was one. Ms. Kenshin was another. And we had five other volunteers. Don't laugh, Mr. Cullen. We, <laughs> we won't harm anybody. Um, we, uh, we did a lot of shooting, and it's a blast. I foresee that we're going to have a lot of adults interested in this, sufficient amounts that we will start an adult program. Our intention is to have two seasons a year, eight weeks at a time, and uh, to do some, um, some more formalized training as we go along. We uh, already have 30 kids that attend every Tuesday and it's incredible to watch them progress with such a sport. Archery is very popular. We intend to become members of the USA Archery Association, and uh, this will help strengthen our certification. We ha already have another five volunteers who wish to certify, so we will have another certification class in the very near future. Um, we would like to take a really hard look at the rules and regulations, at the cost, and at the insurance issues concerning the leasing of our parish facilities. Gorney and I intend to, over the next several weeks, sit down, look at them very closely, see what we think is apl applicable in today's world, and uh, sort of try and streamline some of them. The original ones were, were um, created under a, uh, an air of discontent with what we had insofar as protecting the parish. And uh, we haven't, in my experience, and I've been in recreation almost nine years, experienced anything that really justifies completely some of the rules and regulations that we've got. A lot of people sit down and read over that sheet and initial it, and they couldn't tell you what's on it. 
a lot of it just doesn't apply. For instance, we have a $250 deposit for damages. $250 won't fix anything. We don't very often experience a lot of damage during these events, thank goodness. You know, a lot of the, if you want to call it damages, go on outside of the facilities. They don't affect the facilities at all. Um, so we'd like, when we come to some conclusions and have some opinions and some some things that we would like for you to look at. We would like for you just to be aware that we're going to be doing this over the next several weeks and we want to bring you the end result of, of our consensus and let you look at it and let you compare it to what's already in place and see if you can help us with, like I said, just streamlining some of this stuff. It's just, it's not up to date. It needs to be looked at again. Uh, the last thing that I really want to uh, remark on, and Garney asked me to please put this in the director's report, is that we are experiencing, um, and it's almost cyclical the way it happens, vandalism at the parks. And it's not always a childish prank. We have obscene writings on buildings, and of course we have to take care of that right away. But uh, we recently had Butch Gore broken into they took the gate, the entrance gate, off the hinges to enter the park. And we had some combination padlocks on some things out there, and they opened those locks with the combination. They took the gator, took it for a joyride, and left it in some tall grass right by, I think it was Lake Martin. We recovered that piece of equipment, but to take that gator, they had to break into the sea can that was out there. And I'm not sure if they cut a padlock or if that was, again, another uh, padlock that you could enter with a combination, but they got in somehow. The point to mentioning this to you folks is that we intend to install cameras, security cameras, at almost every park we've got. We have to stop this. It's extremely important to stop it for several reasons, one of which is if it's kids doing it, if they are the perpetrators, then they need to be taken in hand now and taught that this is not acceptable behavior by whatever means necessary. It's also very costly, both in manpower hours and in financial cost to the parish. Uh, but the other thing is that if you can't go into a park in the afternoon or when dark is approaching, and we are also looking at security lighting for all of the parks, um, if you can't go into that park, at least within reasonable hours of operation, and feel safe, there's a problem. And it's a problem that you as council members, we as recreation people, the parish president, everyone who works for this government should feel responsible to. It's not great to be in fear of leaving your home, but, it, you know, these parks are for the public. And so we feel like the expenditure of sufficient funds to uh, install these cameras, which have proven already in our scope uh, to be extremely effective in stopping this because we've had several incidences where we have security cameras and we have caught them red-handed. So anyway, we're looking at future expenditures to curtail this vandalism. It's, it's just not to be tolerated. And that's it. Any questions? Mr. Bell? Beth, thank you for your report. I'd like to commend Garney, you, your entire recreation department for getting us where we're at now okay. and uh, for, the, for the future. I know it's big things uh, ahead. Mm -hmm. Talking about the cameras, I talked to Garney a little bit this morning about, you know, cameras, it's a difference, but he talked about the 16 people that they've called already. Right. In the public buildings that are going to be... Uh, maybe used for receptions or what have you. Have you thought about cameras at those sites also? If someone damages these buildings, they should be? We have discussed that. And first, we feel like the priority is the parks, because mm -hmm. obviously that's where most of vandalism is occurring. But you have a valid point, because if you have a camera in a building that uh, will virtually record an entire event, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. That won't hurt anything. It could also help in the case of liability issues, and right. we're pretty tight on that right now as far as coverage goes, but, uh, you know, the more we've got, the merrier. Uh, okay. Wouldn't hurt a thing. Okay. Once again, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else?
Uh, let's see, going to number five, West Ascension Recreation Report. Mr. Paul Measle. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Past President, Mr. Grant. Councilman. Uh, tonight I'm going to give you a quick uh, report on the state of condition across the river on the west side. Uh, and we'll get into it a little bit later uh, as I get through this. Financially, uh, all financial obligations have been met as we complete our first year. And in many uh, cases, the overdue obligations inherited by the current board has been taken care of. And we're currently in excellent financial standing with all of the vendors that we deal with. Programming-wise, uh, we haven't completed everything that we started out to complete uh, for several different reasons. Uh, but our pre-prep pre basketball program is in UN this year, and it's going pretty well. It's completing, finally coming to a completion right at this time. The Biddy basketball program, the baseball and softball programs were very successful. And the general response from the people running these programs, the association directors, is they feel like uh, this past year has been probably the most efficiently run and operated season since the inception of the commission. So we were pretty thankful for that. Uh, property and maintenance wise, all the parks on the west side have been managed and maintained in what we think has been a highly professional manner. We've attempted to make every effort possible to satisfy and accommodate the general public's use, and we think we've done so. As far as accountability, the recent com recently completed audit will let it speak for itself when it comes public. Uh, we were commended by the auditors for having an excellent audit and he especially mentioned the fact that we immediately as a board addressed all of the negative findings of the previous audit. We made sure that uh, all of our public meetings have been publicly posted as required by law and uh, all of the minutes have been published in the journal as required and done so in a timely manner. Having made this report, let me say that effective June 30th, 2009, I attended my resignation as chairman and relinquish my seat on the commission. I made this decision to do so based solely on the fact that the current setup makes it impossible to continue recreational growth and progress on the west side of the river. With the possible purchase of the South Louisiana State Fairgrounds property, it seems that the most efficient operational setup would place recreation completely under the Parish Recreation Department. After having spent approximately eight to 10 hours a day for the last 365 days guiding West Ascension Recreation, I know we can no longer operate under a two-party fiscal program with the city's ending in July, or beginning in July and the parish's ending in December. It makes it almost impossible to give an accurate report and keep track of what's going on. We've done the best we could under the circumstances. We also realize that it's no longer possible to operate under the reimbursement system that we currently have. Uh, we've made some suggestions. I've, I've put in writing to the administration, uh, along with my resignation letter, what I thought would work after watching it work from such a close vantage point. But most importantly, I realize we no longer can operate with a board of commissioners that appear only on meeting nights, if at all. The situation must be addressed and done so in a timely manner. We've come way too far to let this progress that we made over the last year slip. As the closest person to this current situation, I recommend that the West Ascension Recreation Service Commission be de decommissioned, that it be placed under the Ascension Parish Recreation Director. Having said that, I want to thank Councilman Shakespeare for appointing me to the commission for this past year. I'd also like to thank Parish President Martinez, Mr. Grant, Mr. George Redillion, Ms. Tony Uso and the Finance Office in Donaldsonville, and this Recreation Board. Through the teamwork that y'all put together, we have been able to accomplish some things in spite of the situation. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you for your service. <laughs> Parish President? Yeah, I'd like to thank Paul personally uh, for doing such a great job. I mean, this I, I totally agree that the West Central Recreation has been in better shape this year than I've ever seen it, and he's done an excellent job getting everything straightened out from the past. Uh, 
and, and making sure that uh, the kids enjoyed themselves and had a nice place to play across the river. So, Paul, I, I just want to thank you personally for the job that you did and uh, appreciate you and wish you would stay where you're at. Got a comment, uh, Mr. Law? Um, and with the contract, um, I think I made when that came up. My concerns uh, kind of clear then, and Mr. Niza's comments tonight only um, stoked that fire a little bit in my mind. I've always kind of had just had an issue with the fact that we're talking about West Ascension recreation. I mean, we all the time talk about East Side versus West Side and all that division and all that. The fact that we have a separate bureaucracy for that and the fact that we subsidize the city when they are a city it just has bothers me and always has always bothered me I, I think the recreation department of the parish has been doing a phenomenal job as everyone I think can agree uh, whether it be on the West Bank or the East Bank or what have you so and, and I, I don't understand why we pay the city an amount and then, you know, f for when th it's the city's responsibility. I mean, if they want to negotiate with the parish on a particular uh, issue for a, a, a range of services that the parish can provide them, then we approach it like that. If they want, or, or if it's a the fairgrounds or what have you, then we approach it like that. But uh, I, I just don't know that I can support uh, continuing to 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 fund uh, and and subsidize. Uh, a separate bureaucracy. We don't have a North Ascension Recreation Commission or anything like that. It's it's about the parish, and uh, I, I'd frankly like to see a, the West Ascension Recreation Commission uh, abolished. I'd like to see it come under the parish, uh, and I'd like to see the parish take care of the unincorporated areas. If it's in the city of Donaldsonville, then I'd like to see them negotiate with with the the council and uh, administration about that. Joe, yeah. Um, I know Chris's concern on this matter. He's been consistent with that. He always has addressed that issue. But uh, since I've been on board on uh, the parish council, and uh, we reviewed those records and accountability of the West Ascension Recreation about three years ago. And those issues in the last two years, we renegotiated the, the intergovernment agreement with the city of Donsonville. And our biggest concern was accountability and um, financial uh, uh, funding. But as Mr. Nizo stated, that was our first year under the new agreement, and we came under budget. I mean, we was in budget. We funded all the program. We put aside parish and city and capital outlay money to improve those parks in the unincorporated area of the city of Donsonville because those parks are right now, is they are el elaborated. I mean, there, one park have been there for almost 40 years, and they have not had new playground equipment. This funds that we set aside here over the last past two years will be able to do that. Parish president put some funds on the side for that, that area for the unincorporated area. That's what those funds want. He also put $750,000 for the east side, and they are doing work on it. You know, you know I, I disagree at the current time that we disband this here because <clears throat> based on one recommendation from one individual. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that what I did or brought to this council uh, two years ago and they worked it out and they, and they did it successfully. Now, because one person come here and he sees his pros and cons on it, but what the rest of the board say? What does the city of Donsonville say? I mean, this is a, a issue that needs to be discussed openly and across the board. I understand the parish concern. I understand that, but this, this in the last two years, it been work. It worked fine. Now all of a sudden we want to disband it based on one recommendation. That's hard for me to believe this council can just do that and don't ask anyone else that. Ms. Lamb. Yeah, Mr. Paul, I, I know y'all meet with the board on a regular basis. Have the rest of the board members looked at this situation or is in talk, negotiating? Uh, I'd like Should I say, say are they aware of it? I'd like to say yes, but we can't get more than uh, three people if we're lucky if to we're attend lucky. the meeting. Okay. It's, it's really a struggle okay. to get them to appear, attend. Okay. And just to address what uh, 
Mr. Joseph said, uh, the last year <clears throat> we've made some good progress, Mr. Joseph, but we inherited a really messy place the year when we took it over. And I think the audit and mm -hmm. the address that we were given and the memorandum we were given by the administration when we took over in July would clearly back that up. So this last year we have made some progress, but we can't go any further with it. I'm not saying we didn't make progress. I agree with you, we have. But the agreement is not working the way it was set up to work. And, and Mr. Nizo, okay. once and again, I, I, just appreciate, from I appreciate me being there every day. Look, I appreciate your service. I mean, it, it take a lot of effort. But, you know, I'm one of those believers in it, you know, and I come from That's the fine. hardcore, the Marine Corps. That's fine. I can't go in further. I, I beg different on that. You can do a lot of things if you really yeah. want to do it. You can't and do I'm it no under the car. I agree with you, Mr. George. The river want to advance. I agree with you. We can go further, but not under the current situation. Well, That's my opinion. I accept your opinion. Mr. Lamb? Yeah, past president, I guess a recommendation. And I know we probably have a plan if we take it back under, under one department. Our department director right now is doing an excellent job on this side. I'm sure he can uh, follow up on the other side and do the same, uh, maybe with an assistant or something on, on the West Bank. So I'm sure y'all have a plan if we take it back to keep the parks up and keep them moving forward. That's correct, Mr. Lambert. We, uh, Mr. Grant and I met last week with the mayor. Uh, and at that meeting, they had a couple councilmen that were present. We discussed the possibility of uh, taking over West Ascension Recreation if that is what they so wanted, okay? We did not say go in there and say we want to take over Rest Ascension Recreation. That's not the way. We're not holding any hammers over anybody's head. Mm -hmm. We simply said if we take over the fairgrounds that we would certainly be willing to work with our recreation department, take over the West Ascension Recreation, and it was stated at that meeting at the time that they were having a committee at a whole meeting next Monday. They were going to discuss the issue. Then we would discuss it further from there and negotiate. Now, I don't know from that time till now uh, what's transpired, but, uh, you know, I, I've had conversation uh, with the mayor this morning. I've had conversation uh, with Mr. Joseph this afternoon. Uh, you know, if that's not suitable, I mean, I I don't know which where else to go. I mean, we don't have members on the committee. Uh, you heard what Mr. Nizo said. Uh, I think he's done an excellent job. I, I think he's got the pulse of what's going on in the recreation over there. He's put in eight to ten hours a day as a volunteer. I totally agree. But yes, we would have a plan in place. Uh, we would probably hire someone to assist in that regards. Uh, the only, you know, question that I had when I did talk to the mayor was about basketball. Not that we would abandon basketball, or abandon baseball, or abandon anything, but it would be run under our rules, and not the current rules. Uh, so, I mean, that was the gist of the conversation. Uh, Nothing was decided, uh, contrary to what's been stated. Uh, we discussed things. We thought we had a very good discussion. Mr. Grant was there. I think he can verify everything I said. Uh, the two other councilmen were there. They can verify that. Uh, nobody made any deals. Nobody did anything. We discussed an issue. Mm -hmm. And that issue's still there. Now, to address what Mr. Law said, if we can't come to some agreement, I guess we're going to have to do what we need to do. We so, parish, yeah. uh, but, you know, first thing, you're going to have a dysfunctional board now because you don't have members again. That Nobody attends the meetings. That's what Mr. Nizo was saying. So we don't want to fall back into the same trap that happened before. Uh, we agreed to go to this contract for the rest of the year and then negotiate. Now, again, by that time, we'll know if we're buying the uh, the fairgrounds are not buying the fairgrounds. At that point, uh, I think it's going to be the city's decision on whether or not they want the parish to take over recreation or not take over recreation. So that's where we're at. So I guess your recommendation is to wait till the end of the contract? 
Uh, are you? Well, it, it's whatever the yeah. board wants. But I mean, you asked me, and I'm, I'm telling you what transpired, and I'm yeah. waiting on a call back from the mayor to, to let me know how their discussions went. I'm just and looking they at very well. As far as which way you want to move yeah. tonight? If we don't want if, to fall behind. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we should continue what we're doing until we hear back from the city. If the city, in fact, wants to take back their recreation over and, and, and run it themselves, uh, they can let me know that. If they want to discuss, they can let me know that. Uh, I don't think at this point uh, any action okay. that's uh, what, that's is what needed. But I think that the dialogue needs to continue. And if uh, they can't get a quorum uh, on this committee, then I think we need to take some action. I mean, yes, there's I a 30-day cancellation clause. Uh, in the contract, and we can do that. We can exercise that. So basically, I'm hoping to hear back from their administration. Uh, and as I said, I want to make it clear that nobody's trying to overrun, go into the city, take over anything. It was negotiations. It was talk. And this is not the first time this has been talked about. Right. Thank you. That's all I had, Chairman. And that's I just want to clarify, um, Mr. Nizo, um, you have five members on that board, correct? Yes, sir. Need three to make them uh, a quorum, right? Yes, sir. All right. So you've been operating the past year with a quorum. We have, with the exception of maybe two meetings. Okay. Right now, we have five members on the board. Okay. You had a quorum, though. We've had one member that showed up three times all year. One member showed up six times all year. So if one gets sick, there's no quorum. The first meeting that I was off the board, we had no quorum. We have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday. There's going to be no quorum. And the city need to, who was the one that had been missing the most? I'm not going to go into particular names. Was it the city or parish? Uh, Appointee, and you have been re you have uh, resigned since when? June 30th. June 30th, and currently right now we have a councilman can appoint to replace you. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank. You. That it? I I just let. Administration keep going with the negotiations and come back out of the next meeting with a decision on which way we need to move forward with this. Well, I don't think we can, have anything to move on tonight, you know, since we're in the under negotiation with the city. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Did you sign up? I don't know. <laughs> did you sign up, sir? <laughs> sir, did you sign up? <laughs> yes, sir. State your name, please. Adrian Thompson. Uh, President, where are we are on the, pro the playground equipment that they're replacing in Modas? We have a capital outlay program. They're supposed to do some playground equipment in Modest, uh, a trail up in uh, Lemonville, and a walking trail on LA-1 at Laurie. Had they ordered, have they ordered the playground equipment for the Modest Park yet? Yes. Mr. Thank Grant has Thank ordered you, it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm six. Motion adjourned, Mr. Chairman.